Hello, brothers and sisters. I hope you are doing well. And so today I have a message from the Lord. But before I share it, I want to confess that I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God who has come in the flesh on earth and died for our sins and was buried and rose on the third day. Hallelujah. Amen. Before I go through the message of today, I want to share with you a few words from the Lord. I have been trying to record this message for many days and I couldn't because of a lot of attacks I got. Understand that the devil hates these types of messages I share. And so today, I wanted to keep this message short, but the Lord rebuked me from doing so. And so he gave me Jeremiah 26 from verse 2 to 6. Thus says the Lord, Stand in the court of the Lord's house and speak to all the cities of Judah, which come to worship in the Lord's house. All the words that I command you to speak to them do not diminish the word. Perhaps everyone will listen and turn from his evil way that I may relent concerning the calamity which I propose to bring on them because of the evil of their doings. And you shall say to them, thus says the Lord, if you will not listen to me to work in my law, which I have set before you, to heed the words of my servants, the prophets whom I sent to you, both rising up, Ilya and sending them, then I will make this house like shallow, and will make this city a curse to all the nations of the earth. Brothers and sisters, I am going to share with you everything the Lord said in this message. Now, it will be up to you to sit down and listen to this message, hear the word of God, and follow his instructions. God is calling all people from everywhere to repent their sins before it is too late. Acts 17 verse 30. I hope you understand, brothers and sisters, the timing we are living in. Another word from the Lord is in Revelation 14, verse 7. Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. Amen. Before I share the message of today, the Lord wants me to share with you one of the messages he gave me four years ago. It was in the beginning of my ministry. I had a dream in which I saw the Lord Jesus Christ standing in front of me. He fixed his eyes on me for one minute without saying anything, and then he said to me, Tell my people, the king of the kings is returning soon, but my people are not ready. Then he said to me again, Tell them to seek God until they find him, because he is the only one who is going to save them in the coming days. Amen. Brothers and sisters, Jesus is God. Every knee will bow down and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. Amen. John 14 verse 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is the only way to heaven. There is no other way. Without Jesus Christ, no one can be saved. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Time is very short. 
your personal relationship with the Lord matters. You do not need anyone's permission to go to the Lord Jesus Christ. He is your God and Savior, and He is your everlasting Father. And so He desires to have a personal relationship with every person. The second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ is at hand. Repent and be sober, says the Lord God. I hope you understand the difference between the second coming and the rapture. If you don't, you might go and watch one of my videos in which I talked about the difference between the second coming and the rapture. I believe that the time has come, but only those who are watching and paying attention to what is going on around us, those who pray and seek the Lord on a daily basis, understand and know that we do not have much time left. And so today, the Lord is calling us to use the little time left wisely, because Nobody knows the day or the hour except God alone. And this is why the scripture tells us to watch, pray, and be ready every day. Amen. Now, I am going to share with you a dream I had from the Lord, which I have already shared. But... The Lord wants me to share it again. And this is about the wedding feast in Matthew 22 that is coming. I'm going to talk about the wedding garment, which is a condition to be at the wedding feast. I had a dream where a wedding feast was taking place I was taken to a mansion where the ceremony was happening. The wedding hall was filled with guests. I saw all kinds of people there. They were divided into many small groups. I saw women who wore short dresses, high heels. They heard makeup on, hairstyles of all kinds. I saw men with long hair. Some of them had braised hair. They were doing things that God hates. What surprised me? They were acting as if they were in a nightclub. I saw when I got in, I wanted to join them, but I was afraid of being rejected because of the way I was dressed. I had a shirt and a t-shirt on. I did not have a wedding dress. And also, when the guests saw me, they started laughing at me as if something was wrong with me and so I stayed alone by myself scared and sad and suddenly I saw a small house in front of me which was connected to the mansion there was a woman standing in front of the door, looking at me. This woman asked me, Woman, where is your wedding garment? I said that I don't have 
the wedding garment. She said to me, okay, stay there and wait for me. Then she left. After a few minutes, she came back. She asked me to go to see her. I went. Then she opened a door and showed me many wedding garments and told me to try them. She was sitting there watching me. And so I started trying one by one. But all the wedding garments I tried were too small. And after a few minutes, the woman said to me, okay, stop. The time is over. The wedding feast is about to start. At that moment, I panicked because I haven't yet found a wedding garment that fits me. Then I decided to put on one of the wedding garments, even though it was too small, because I really wanted to stay and meet the groom and the bride. And so I went out. And when one of the guests saw me, she said, oh, oh, look at her. Her wedding garment is too small. And also it is different from ours. At that moment, I saw a man walking towards me. The man came to me and said, how did you come in here without a wedding garment? I did not answer because I was terrified. At the same time, I wanted to stay. Then the man commanded me to leave the house immediately. Then I left. The dream ended. Now I am going to share with you the message from the Lord about this dream, brothers and sisters. I'm going to read Matthew 22 from verse 10 to 14, but please take time to study the whole chapter. Pray and seek the Lord for discernment and understanding. Verse 10 says, So those servants went out into the highways and get it together, all whom they found, both bad and good. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he saw a man there who did not have on a wedding garment. So he said to him, friend, how did you come in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the servants, bind him hand and foot, take him away and cast him into outer darkness. They will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called but few are chosen. I'm going to share with you the message from the Lord to the church, to all nations, because all people, all nations are invited to the wedding feast. The Lord said, the dream I had represents the state of the church today. The Lord sees the church today like a nightclub where people go to drink 
and dance and also to see some type of entertainment that is how God sees the church today. The first invitation to the wedding was sent to the Jewish people, but they were not willing to come. Instead, they killed God's prophets. The second invitation to the wedding feast has been sent out to all people, all nations, since 2,000 years. I'm going to share with you a word from the Lord, which is Matthew 28, verse 18 and 19. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, all people are invited to the wedding feast. The message from the Lord today for all people, the Lord says to me, tell my people, without the right wedding garment, I will cast you into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. Outer darkness is for those who do not belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters, and this is the final judgment. The Lord is not pleased with Jewish people because they were invited to the wedding first and they were not willing to come. And the Lord is not pleased either with all nations, all people, because they were invited to the wedding feast, but they came without a wedding garment. And so, in order to understand how God feels about both Jewish people and all nations, us, you might read Isaiah chapter 5 from verse 1 to 5. This scripture applies to both Jewish people and the church today. And so, the Lord wants you to sit down and study all the scriptures I'm going to share with you. And examine how you are living your life before him these last days we are living in. And ask yourself if you are among those few who are chosen. The Lord says that many in the church today are working in the flesh, and only a few are working in the spirit. Those who are working in the flesh are not saved. Galatians 5 verse 16, work in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the last of the fresh. 
the Lord says that many in the church today don't have the right wedding garment. The wedding garment represents holiness and righteous. Holiness and righteous. Holiness and righteous are key to the wedding feast. The Lord says that the wedding garment must be without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. These are the fruits the Lord is looking for in believers. God invited all people to the wedding feast, but when he sees people in the church, he chooses only a few. Brothers and sisters, every word of God will come to pass. Many are called, but few are chosen. The Lord says that many believe that salvation is a gift. You are right. Salvation is a gift through faith in Jesus Christ. But the problem is what do you do with God's salvation? The Lord said that many are stuck with the teaching on once saved, always saved. The Lord wants you to make sure you understand the meaning of once saved, always saved. Pray and seek him for discernment and understanding because many are going to be deceived by misunderstanding of that teaching. The Lord gave me a scripture to prove you that there is a work to do for your salvation. Philippians 2, verse 12 to 13. I'm going to read verse 12. It says, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And so, try to understand your belief in once saved, always saved, and you believe that there is no work to do. Now, the scripture proves you that there is work to do for your salvation, otherwise you will lose it. The Lord says that people want to go to heaven, but also they want the things of this world. He says that you cannot have both. No one can serve two masters, God and the devil. The devil is the leader of this world. The Lord says that the only way to avoid going to hell is repentance. 
he wants you to study Luke 16 from verse 19 to 31. The only way to avoid going to hell is repentance, brothers and sisters. Luke 16 from verse 19 to 31. I know that many are going to become so angry and full rage about this message. Probably they are going to attack me with the scriptures, trying to justify that no one can live a holy life, which is a lie, because Hebrews 12 verse 14 says, pursue peace with all people and a holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Holiness is a requirement for believers. Leviticus 19 verse 2, God says, Speak to all the congregation of the children of Israel and say to them, you shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. The Lord also wants you to read the book of Job and see what God says about Job. Job was a righteous man on earth before God. And also, the Lord wants you to read Luke chapter 1 and to see what God says about Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth. They were the righteous people on earth before God. And also read about Noah and others. Without holiness and righteous no one will see the Lord. And so, for those who are going to become so angry, the Lord says, be angry and do not sin. Psalm 4, verse 4. The Lord gave me a few scriptures. I'm going to share these scriptures with you. He talked about Revelation chapter 3 from verse 1 to 6. And this is to the church of Sardis. Verse 1 says, I know your works, that you have a name, that you are alive, but you are dead. The Lord is talking about a spiritual dead. He wants you to study Ezekiel 37. The Lord says that when he sees people in the church today, he sees many dry bones, but the Lord wants to restore you, brothers and sisters. And so study Ezekiel 37. Pray and seek the Lord for discernment and understanding. He also talked about Revelation chapter 3 from verse 14 to the lukewarm church. I'm going to read verse 16. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Another scripture the Lord gave me is Revelation chapter 2 from verse 2 to 5 to the church of Ephesus. I know it works, you rebel, you patience, 
and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars. And you have preserved and have patience and have rebought for my name's sake and have not become weary. Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the first works, or else I will come quickly to you. I will come to you quickly and remove your stand from its place unless you repent. Please take time and read yourself those scriptures. Pray and seek the Lord for discernment and understanding. Now I'm going to talk about what the Lord said about worshiping him. He gave me a few scriptures. Deuteronomy 5 verse 7 and 8. Deuteronomy 5 verse 7 and 8. God says, You shall not have other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them. Brothers and sisters, according to the word of God, in John chapter 4, verse 23 and 24. Worship God in spirit and in truth. God is spirit. The Lord says that many are worshiping the black Jesus, the others, the Jewish Jesus, and others the white Jesus. Many have these images of Jesus, pictures, paints. You are provoking God to anger. You must burn all these things, brothers and sisters, and worship God in the spirit and in the truth. God is spirit. Don't be deceived. I hope you take time to go through the word of God. Pray and seek the Lord for discernment and understanding. The Lord talked about the Queen of Heaven. Many are worshiping the Queen of Heaven. They believe she is the mother, Mary, and others believe that she is the bride. This is a deception, brothers and sisters. Jeremiah 7, from verse 17 to 19, it says, Do you not see what they do in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. The children gather wood, the fathers candle, the fire, and the women need though to make cakes for the queen of heaven. And they pull out drink offerings to other gods 
that they provoke me to anger. Brothers and sisters, if you are doing these things, you are provoking God to anger. The queen of heaven is a demon. If you are doing these things, you must stop and repent before it is too late. Doing these things is a witchcraft. And so, the Lord says that unless you turn from your evil ways and repent, you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Acts chapter 3 verse 19. Repent therefore and be converted that your sins might be rotted out so that times of refreshing might come from the presence of the Lord. Amen. Jeremiah 21 verse 13 and 14. It says, I will punish you according to the fruit of your doings, says the Lord. Brothers and sisters, repent and be sober before it is too late. Now I'm going to talk about a few other words from the Lord. He talked about Mark chapter 3 verse 25. And if a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. The Lord is talking about all these conflicts, hate, fights that are causing the division between brothers and sisters. We are seeing these things happening in our own families, in our countries, between the leaders and the people they lead. The Lord says that these things are not from him. They are from the devil. The devil has come to lie, to steal, and to kill. The Lord is calling us to be united, to pursue peace with one another, to all people, to love one another, to pray for one another. He also is calling us to love and pray for our enemies, including our leaders. He gave me scripture, 1 John chapter 2, verse 9. He who says he is in the light, then hates his brother, is in darkness until now. And so, brothers and sisters, let's love one another, pray for one another, and also love and pray for our enemies, including our leaders, because the most of the leaders do not have Jesus Christ as their God and Savior. And so let's pray for them to turn to the Lord Jesus Christ and humble themselves before him and repent all their sins before it is too late. I also want to mention that in October 2022, I shared a video in which the Lord talked about impeachment, and I believe impeachment has happened to um, the President Biden of the United States of America. I know that they are not talking about that, but that is what happened to him understand that nothing happens without God's will. I just wanted to mention that and you might go and watch the video. The Lord talked about sin. John 14 verse 15, Jesus says, If you love me, keep my commandments. Romans 6 verse 23, for the wages of sin is death. 
I want to repeat this, brothers and sisters. The Lord says that the only way to avoid going to hell is repentance. Study Luke 16 from verse 19 to 31. He talks about Job 28, verse 28. And two men, he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. You might also read Proverbs 1, verse 7. The Lord is calling you, brothers and sisters, to seek him for wisdom. Wisdom starts with fixing our eyes, our hearts, and our minds on the Lord Jesus Christ alone. As we worship God in spirit and in truth, as we fear him, wisdom for us, says the Lord God. First John chapter 1 verse 9 if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive our sins brothers and sisters repent before it is too late and stop believing that there is no need to repent this is a lie from the peace of hell God does not condemn us. We condemn ourselves. When you sin and do things God hates over and over again, what do you think is going to happen? The consequences of sin is death. You might read John chapter 8 from verse 10 to 11 and see what the Lord said to the woman who was caught in adultery. He said to her, go and sin no more. I hope you understand this message, brothers and sisters. Please share this video. God does not wish anyone to perish. If you have not given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, turn to him right now. Receive and accept him as your God and Savior. Believe and repent all your sins, then get baptized of water and spirit. Time is very short and God does not wish anyone to perish. Amen. Please study Psalm 51. Psalm 51 is a prayer for repentance. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in His Son, His name, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters.